ask most people about mistletoe and they're probably going to tell you one of two things. Firstly, that they associate it with kissing at Chrissy. And secondly, that it is a parasite that sucks the life out of its host. So why then would the city of Melbourne plant this parasite into perfectly healthy street trees? Right, the big bad parasite. I get about 15 phone calls about that question a week. Mistletoes, are you the guy that says they're great because they're killing trees? They kill trees about as often as fleas kill a dog. It can happen, but it's a pretty sick dog if a few fleas are going to kill it. So it's not part of the plan. And if that was the plan, that would have died out many millions of years ago. Professor David Watson is the man to talk to about mistletoe. He's written a book on them, literally. What is mistletoe? Mistletoe is a way of being a plant. It's a growth habit. So succulents, mangroves, they're all ways of being a plant. A mistletoe is a plant that does three things. It's a parasitic plant that parasitises above ground on branches, not on roots, and it's woody, not herbaceous. And there's lots of species in Australia? Yes, there's almost 100 species of mistletoe in Australia, and they're natives. They're locals, they're from here, they're not introduced. So what did the city set out to do? So the City of Melbourne uh, looked at their plans, lots of development down the road, new infrastructure, new roads and stations, and like that's, they're gonna lose trees. Mm -hmm. So how can we look after the existing trees we've got and make them more friendly for wildlife? And mistletoes are part of that. By putting them up in the canopy, they're adding structure, adding food and shelter for all the wildlife. So the trees that are left are better. The project that David's involved in placed 800 seeds of one Australian species of mistletoe onto a couple of dozen of Melbourne's ubiquitous and non-native plane trees. Why plane trees? Well, there's a lot of them. If you, if you think about Melbourne, you think about trams, you think about avenues of plane trees. They're really good trees for cities because they're pollution resistant, they're really drought tolerant, you can pave right up to the base of them, but they're not really good for anything else. No, so Tim Flannery has a very a quote that I think encapsulates how ecologists think about plane trees. He's got a standing bet at a pub in Adelaide. If anybody brings in a plane tree leaf with a sign of an insect having a chew on it, he'll shout the entire bar. In his words, plane trees are about as useful to Australian wildlife as concrete. So by adding the mistletoe, you're changing that? Exactly. So we're using a native, lobbing it into the canopy and opening up all those resources for all the locals. There's nectar, there's tasty leaves, there's yummy fruit, there's a dense evergreen network of branches to, to, to nest in. What is it that makes this parasite so useful? They're cheats. They're not bound by the same rules as other plants. They flower whenever they want to flower because they're not, they're not waiting for the moisture to get just right where they can get enough resources to flower. If they want to flower, just slurp the goodies out of the tree and flower. So mistletoes have nectar and fruit available when there's no, no other nectar and fruit available in, in that neighbourhood. Oh, here we go, yes. Just here, this little thing. Oh. So that is one of our babies. That's a creeping mistletoe that we planted as a seed two years ago. You planted it by seed? Yes. So we got fresh seed, planted it on the underside of the, of the branch and just sat back and waited. And, and hey presto, there's... So why the underside of the branch? It's a sticky seed and the sticky stuff doesn't just adhere it to the branch, it also absorbs dew and gives the seed a water source because it's got no roots because it's above the ground. So it's a, it's a sort of a portable water source. Is there an offering to the host as well? There is. When they drop their leaves, they don't withdraw any nutrients from, from them before they drop. There's more potassium in real terms in a mistletoe than in the entire gum tree above and below ground. So mistletoe litter is gold. It's full of goodies. And so you, you look underneath the mistletoe, you'll see plants that grow just there that don't grow anywhere else. So they're returning most of those nutrients to the tree. How does the seed get there in nature? So normally it comes out the rear end of a bird. So mistletoes have fleshy fruits full of tasty carbohydrates, proteins, uh, and uh, a bird eats the fruit. Straight through? Comes out the other end. So mistletoe birds are, are, are specialists. All they eat is mistletoe, mistletoe fruit, and 14 minutes after they eat the fruit, out the other end comes a seed still sticky, and they wipe their bum on the branch, and a new mistletoe is born. This, you know, it's, it's at home here on a plane tree, but it looks a lot more like a eucalypt. It does. So uh, this is 
primarily a parasite of, of gum trees, of eucalypts. Its scientific name is Mulerina eucalyptoides, and its leaves look a lot like a gum leaf. So they are the masters of disguise? Pretty much. So you think of the diverse, the quintessential Australian trees, acacias. There's acacia-specific mistletoes that just slurp on acacias. Casuarinas, banksias, hakeas, grevilleas, paperbarks, all have their own mistletoes. I mean, the flowers are really beautiful, aren't they? They are. If you have a look at it like, close up, it's exquisite. I think it ranks right up there with bottle brushes and kangaroo paws as, as, as a gorgeous native wildflower. West Australian Christmas tree, it's the biggest. By far, they can get to 15 metres tall. When the Dutch were exploring this part of the world in the 1600s, they spotted it from the sea. They saw this blazing yellow colour, thought, what on earth is that? First mistletoe described in Australia was in the 1600s from Dutch explorers. So is it really feasible that a home gardener might start to plant some of these mistletoes into their garden? Most definitely. If there's a tree that you've got in your yard, you want to add that extra little element, make it just a bit more bling, Chuck some mistletoe in there. It's actually quite easy to do. It's like nature's hanging basket. Oh, bingo. <laughs> this is the first time in the world we've tried a large-scale inoculation of mistletoes in an urban area. So lots of people are watching this and they've been really impressed by the success so far. And do you think it is going to lead to something much bigger? I think so. I think this is going to be part of cities worldwide. There's trees and let's make those trees better by getting mistletoes into their canopies. It supercharges native ecosystems.